Hey everyone, welcome to another top 10 list. This week's top 10 list is the top 10 notes that might not be worth as much as you think they are. <laughs> um, let me start off by saying, I'm not here to tell you what you should and should not collect. You can collect anything you like. Your collection should be made up of things that you like. What I am here to tell you is whether or not you will find any additional value. Okay. <laughs> Um, like I said, if, if you like the number six and collect every note that's got the number six on it, who am I to judge? But you're probably not going to sell that collection for a ton of money down the road. All right. So I came up with 10 notes that some people tend to collect that, well, let's say, you know, will not be on any auction blocks anytime soon. Or maybe they will, and this will at least help you uh, put in a normal bid rather than one of the crazy bids I see. All right, anyway, number 10. This is a Where's George note. And I know people save Where's George notes. I see it in the comments all the time. I'll see people telling me that they found one and they put it in their collection. And that, uh, well, you're defeating the purpose of a Where's George note. <laughs> First of all, um, Where's George notes aren't worth any additional money um, because... All you gotta do is buy a stamp. Now you can make all the Where's George notes you want. <laughs> so there's definitely no additional value in a Where's George. Are they neat to find? Yeah. But finding the note isn't the cool part. Logging the note is. Go to the website, where'sgeorge.com. Uh, create yourself an account. It doesn't take very long at all. And then log the note that you found. You'll find where that note has been. And then you too will be notified when the next person logs this note. That's the cool part about Where's George, not putting the Where's George note in a binder. <laughs> you find the note, you log the note, you spend the note. So yeah, definitely no additional value on a Where's George. That is number 10. Number nine, this is a $2 bill. A lot of people save $2 bills. Um, they don't see $2 bills very often, so that gives them the impression that $2 bills are rare. Uh, $2 bills are not rare. <laughs> $2 bills are rarely spent. $2 bills are rarely found in circulation, but $2 bills are not rare. Go to your bank, ask for $2 bills. Odds are they're going to have them, okay? This is just a $2 bill. There's nothing special about it. Nothing fancy, no fancy serial number, nothing about the date, and that's not a star. It's just a regular note. So this is worth $2. It's always going to be worth $2. Nothing special about it. Now, if your bank doesn't have any $2 bills, you can order $2 bills, but they're not going to order you one. And odds are they're not even going to order you a um, hundred of them. You'll probably have to order like a thousand. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't order notes. Um, but the thing is, when you get those notes, if you ordered a thousand two dollar bills, if you order them and then just look through them for fancy serial numbers and then return them, that bank will then have those two dollar bills basically forever or until they decide to send them back to the Federal Reserve themselves um, because people just don't spend them. So, once again, they're not rare. <laughs> if you were to order a thousand two dollar bills, I would be willing to bet that the vast majority of those would be crisp, uncirculated notes just because that's what's it's sitting in storage. People don't spend these. Um, so yeah, not rare, uh, just harder to come by. Go to your bank, ask them. Odds are they'll have a couple $2 bills laying around. And uh, if you really wanted to order them, you'll end up with brand new crisp bills. So that's number nine. <clears throat> number eight on my list. Number eight, this is an over-inking error. If you look right here, you can see the nine is much darker than the other digits. You can see it even more over here. Both of these nines are over-inked. Um, so what? <laughs> this is caused essentially by that particular digit starting to wear a little bit and the edge of the printing surface uh, being worn is now becoming wider. So it looks like an over-inking error. Um, it's not an error. <laughs> it's just standard printing procedure. Once once it does wear down enough, they will replace the digit, but it's simple wear and tear. <clears throat> no additional value. Now, I'm not saying that you can't find notes that would be worth additional. Like, for instance, here's an 8, and this 8 is filled in. 
if you look, that's not a marker. There's actually additional ink filling in that eight. You guys have also seen my filled star. Um, yeah, that would be an over-inking error. <laughs> the filled star, that would be an over-inking error. Um, this is a note you'll find in circulation, and it's not going to get you any additional value. Uh, if you think it is worth more, then I think I will pull out 50 of these on my next search and put them up on eBay and see what they sell for, because odds are they won't. Uh, yeah, no additional value on those, so you can spend these. That is number eight, 1098. Number seven. Number seven is bookends. <clears throat> bookends is when you've got like seven, nine in the front, seven, nine in the back, okay? Um, that would be bookends. You've got the same pair on either side. Now, sometimes they'll be, you know, seven, seven, you know, on the, on the front, seven, seven on the back. Uh, it doesn't matter. Every single note has two digits in the front because there are eight digits. Whatever those two digits are, there are 100 different combinations from 0, 01 all the way to 00, zero. you know, 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03. Anyway, there's 100 different combinations. So with 100 different combinations there, that means there is a 1 in 100 chance that the front two notes are going to match the back two notes. Maybe it would be, make more sense the other way around. Every note is in the in a brand new sleeve or a brand new strap is going to have two digits here, and one of those notes in that brand new strap is going to have the same two digits here, because that's how they print the notes in order. So you're talking one out of every hundred notes is going to be bookends. Um, so it's not that hard. That's one percent. Um, <laughs> if they print. 96 million notes at a time that means 9.6 million of those notes are going to have bookends that's not rare <laughs> i'm sorry that would be uh, uh not 9.6 that would be uh 900 960,000 uh so yeah one out of or 960,000 out of 9. 9, 96 million yeah i can talk this morning you can see that that is just not rare one out of 100 not going to cut it so uh no don't bother saving those that was number seven. Number six. <clears throat> this is a birth year note. Okay. Uh, not only is this a birth year note, you can see it starts with 1945. Uh, but then if you if you squint and scratch your head a little bit, you could go 1945, the 15th of August, and ignore the zero. Okay, so I have all kinds of problems with that theory. First and foremost, people don't generally pay money for notes for the year that they were born. People will pay money for a note that's got the exact date uh, featuring month, day, and year. Um, but that would that would be a note, for instance, that would say 0815 you know, for August, 8, or August 15th, 1945. Uh, this doesn't say that. This says the 15th of the 80th month or the... Uh, the 80th of the 15th month. <laughs> so neither one of those are actual dates. So what you're basically saying, if you're holding a note like this, is you're ignoring the last four notes and just saying, oh, this note has 1945 on it. And for a note that says a year on it, um, if you look far enough into the future, every note has a year on it. Uh, so no, <laughs> not collectible. Um, at, at the very least, uh, it's currently 2022. Okay, so once again, we're going to cover up all these, and that means I can make this as high as 2022. Every note from this number on down is a year up until you get to 0000. <laughs> so no, no, it, it, it's, not, it, it's not rare. It, it's not worth any additional money. It's, it's a spender, so go ahead and spend it. That was number six. Number five. Let me take a peek at this one here. Okay, number five. This one, this one uh, perplexes people a little bit. This is what is called a broken ladder, and technically, it is a broken mixed ladder for that. Okay, um, what am I talking about? Well, look at the digits. You have the digits zero, and then you have a one. There's no two. Then you have a 3, a 4, a 5, a 6, a 7, and an 8. <clears throat> so you have 
eight different digits, no digits repeating in this particular note. Generally speaking, if you have eight different digits, you would call that a mixed ladder, okay? A mixed ladder, uh, a ladder indicates all the digits one through eight in order, or zero through seven, or uh, two through nine, or three through zero. You know, th that, would be a, that would be an ascending ladder, and if you had them in descending order, uh, you would have, you know, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You know, that's a descending ladder. A mixed ladder is when you have those digits but out of order, okay? Now, that, that's a mixed ladder. You'll notice that this is missing numbers, okay? Like I said, there's a zero, there's a one, but there is no two, okay? Then you get the three, the four, the five, the six. Well, that missing two breaks the ladder, so this becomes a broken ladder. All right. Why do I not save these? Well, first and foremost, I don't save them because I don't see them. It's, 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 it's hard for me to distinguish these from just a random number because it is just a random number. Um, so that, that's why I don't save them. My brain can't pick them out. Uh, but the numismic reason for not saving these. A, uh, a straight-up ladder has seven different combinations ascending and descending total, okay? So out of 96 million notes, there are only seven of them. That's rare. That's worth money. <laughs> there, there aren't very many of those. But when you start talking about a mixed ladder, a mixed ladder, which if I spot, I will save, um, you're talking about there are 10 different digits in the first position, nine different digits left in, for the second, eight for the third, seven for the fourth, and so on down the line, which gives you 1 million eight hundred and, what was it, One, 1. 1.8 million different combinations, if I remember right. 1.8 million combinations out of 100 million combinations is uh, 2%, roughly. So two out of every 100 notes. So that's not rare. Two out of every hundred is not rare. Now, when you start talking about the broken aspect, where you can have notes out of sequence, you know, one like this note here, zero, one, missing the two, well, now you're adding, you know, now that that's more likely to happen than less likely. Because when you're talking about a mixed ladder, you're actually not talking about 10 digits, you're talking about eight digits. So you'd be talking eight times seven times six times five. Anyway, um, I hope I explained that correctly because it, it can be a struggle as far as ladders go, but that's why I don't collect mixed ladders. That's why I don't save mixed ladders or broken ladders. One, they're hard to spot. Two, they're more frequent than you can imagine. They're just harder to see. Um, if you have one in your collection, great, but I wouldn't expect to get a hundred bucks for it on eBay or anything like that. All right, so that is number four, right? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Nope, that was number 5. Number 4. Now, this one's going to surprise a lot of people. This is a 1957 silver certificate. Now, this particular one is missing the corner, and it's been through it. <clears throat> this is the last year for the silver certificates, the 57 series. Last year for silver certificates. Um, so this is the most recent version of silver certificate, which means if you wanted to save one of these... It should be pretty crisp. And even if it was, if this note was perfect, it's still only going to be worth, you know, probably in the neighborhood of 5 to $10 if it was perfect. Um, this one isn't perfect. And a lot of people save the first one of these that they come across because they think that's cool. And, and that, that's great. You should. You should save the first one. But you can buy these notes in bulk for 2 to $3 a piece. So if that's the case then what is one that isn't in good condition worth? Probably pretty close to face value. Maybe a little bit more than face value, but pretty close to face value. So when you're talking about a note this inexpensive, why not pay the $5 to get one that's really nice? Why would you pay $4 for one like this? You see what I'm saying? So yeah, I wouldn't, you know, I, I, I happen to have, 
gotten this one for face value. And yeah, it's got tape on it and everything else. And I just hold on to it because I know I can't really sell it. You know, I could probably use it for a giveaway, but I don't know that I actually want to give this to anybody because it's not really worth that much. But yeah, that, that's one thing you want to consider about the silver certificates. They don't have a high value. So if you're going to get one, get one that's nice. All right. Number three on the list. Another one that might shock you. Um, this is a 1963 $2 Red Seal. Now, a $2 Red Seal, this basically is the same as those silver certificates. Uh, this is well, obviously is a 63 legal tender Red Seal. It's the last year that they made these. And uh, these go for about seven bucks. Well, if this is worth seven bucks, why would you get one that's folded up, limp, written on? They aren't that hard to find. Um, I went to the bank because they told me someone deposited some. And uh, yeah, so I mean, I've got a ton of these. They're just not that tough to get. <clears throat> so if they aren't that tough to get, if you are going to spend $7, don't get one like this. If you get one like this in circulation, great. <clears throat> if you go to your bank and they said, hey, look what we got, that's great. But I wouldn't go to a show and buy one in this condition. And I certainly wouldn't be paying anything over face value for something like this. So keep that in mind. Um, once again, like I said with the silver certificates, when you're talking about a lower, than, a lower priced note, you might as well pay up. Because what is paying up? <laughs> do you want to pay $2 for this in crappy condition? Or do you want to pay $7 for this in really good condition? Well, we're talking about the difference between a McDonald's cheeseburger and a McDonald's quarter pounder. Okay, I mean, come on. Um, it's not that tough of a decision. Pay the extra money and get the good one because you're still going to get change from your 10. <laughs> All right, that's number three. Number two on my list. I'm calling this one an almoster. Okay, uh, this is almost a broken ladder. You can see it's got one, two, three, four, five. It's missing the six. There's the seven. There's the eight. But, oh, there's a two in there as well. So we, this note actually has two twos. So is this a ladder? No. They're out of order. Is it a broken ladder? Uh, no, because there are duplicate numbers there. It does have the one extra two. But it's so close. Well, no. No, it's not. <laughs> if you're collecting notes that are close to collectible, then they're close to being worth money. I don't know how much more I can emphasize that. If you have a note that's close to a radar and you do not have a radar, I can understand you keeping a note that's close to a radar. But once you get a radar, all those close notes become garbage. Spend them. You, you don't need to hold on to them. Nobody wants to buy a note that's almost worth something. Um, so those are truly spenders. They're great placeholders. Uh, if you if you have uh, a note that has three of a kind because you haven't found one that is six of a kind, I can understand you wanting to hold the place for that note. But once you get the note you're looking for, you can certainly spend those placeholders. No additional value there. Uh, let's see. That's number two. Number one, before I get to number one, I do have a bonus note. I guess I should have thought this through a little bit better. But uh, for bonus notes, I want to talk about a gas pump error. Um, a lot of people, and I think one of these actually was a partial gas pump. Let me just take a quick look at these and see if I can spot that. Because, yeah, they don't stick out very much to me at all. Um, which one was it? Was it this one? I think it was. Might have been this one, yeah. Um, no, those are pretty well lined up. Well, the seven and the nine might be just a touch high. Anyway, what what is get what's a gas pump error? A gas pump error or a stuck digit error is when the digit isn't perfectly aligned with these. Uh, it may be up just a little bit, and I generally struggle trying to find them because some people will actually take a ruler to find out. It looks like the one, the seven, and the nine are all high compared to these here. Um, so what? <laughs> you know, you know how fast these are printed. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't surprise me if some of the grease in the wheel picked up some dust or some paper uh, shavings and now has caused the wheel not to make the full rotation and is now a millimeter stuck a little bit high or a little bit low. That is not an error, not a major error at all. 
unless it becomes a major error and you get a stuck digit like this. Now you can see that part of the digit is missing. It is clearly above. And that does give you some idea of how high the digit can be because you can see where the digit is no longer printed. Well, you'll never have a digit higher than that because it just doesn't reach the page because half of this digit is missing. Well, obviously all of that digit was on the wheel, but it never made contact with the paper. So that's the highest point that you're going to see any digit. Does that make sense to you? Let me uh, use this here. Okay, and it's clear, so I don't know how well it's going to work. But look at how high up this position is. That is the highest point that is going to be printed. So you're talking literally one millimeter, maybe two millimeters above. Well, if you can see the whole digit one millimeter above, no, that that's literally the mistake, one millimeter. If this note was off-center by a millimeter, you may or may not even notice it. So why would you care that the digit is off by one millimeter? The error, like I said, is when you get a partial digit. Because now this technically isn't even a legal note because it doesn't have a legal serial number on it. Um, a note has to have two full serial numbers to be valid. If you take a note and tear it in half, you can't take the half a note to a bank and redeem it for a, a full dollar. If you take a note and damage portion of the note, as long as you can read both serial numbers, they'll replace the note. Anyway, when you talk about gas pump errors or stuck digits, that's the real deal. That's worth money. Not a lot of the stuff that it's just slightly elevated. All right, so what is number one on my list? Number one, this one's a head scratcher to me. I don't understand this one. I never did, and I'll let you guys decide. Uh, if you want them, if you like them, great. I just don't get it. It is a $2 bill that is a first day issue, okay? And what they did was the day that the $2 bills came out in 1976, somebody took bills to the post office. Actually, a lot of somebody's did this. They took it to the post office, put a stamp on it, and had them cancel the stamp. So now you have, first of all, a postage stamp, so you have a sticker on your bill, and then you have a counter stamp <laughs> saying the date on the note. I don't know why you would do that. If I take a brand new bill and I put a stamp on it, I ruin the bill. <laughs> if the bank counter stamps a note, they just ruin the bill. So now you have people intentionally taking first day issues and ruining the bill. I, I don't understand. And some of you are going to say, oh, well, it was the first day issue of the 1976 bicentennial note with the brand new back on the, or, yeah, ba brand new back. Okay. So I still ask the question, why would you do that? Here's what I got from my bank. A bunch of them. What do you know? Crisp, uncirculated 1976 $2 bills. A stack. There's some that... Those in the center aren't uncirculated, but you can see the top portion of these are crisp, uncirculated from the bank. Didn't need to put a first day issue sticker on them because they're still readily available. Uh, <laughs> so I don't understand why someone would put that stamp on there and basically destroy the value of the bill. If you write on a note, it's not worth as much. They note it. They notate it. Um, so yeah, I don't get it. Some people like it. I'm not a fan. I don't have any like that. That's why I had to go online to find a picture. Because I don't understand inking bills or putting stamps to try to increase their value. To me, that's just not how it works. Anyway, that's my top 10 list. I know it got kind of lengthy. If you learned anything new this week, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like what you see and you want to see more, please subscribe. Love reading all your comments. Guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.